Hello, everyone. Okay, so you guys, um, we have we've covered Venus, delighted by Mercury. Did two videos on that. This one is going to focus on Venus being starved by the moon. We're going to go into examples of that. <clears throat> And uh, as I'm doing, I'm just going to talk a little bit about other things that come up as they come up, just because I think they're pertinent and worthwhile. But that's the main focus of these video of this video. And um, so I've got quite a few examples ready for you guys that I think are pretty interesting. I'm going to start with what I think is a very interesting one. Um, let me make sure. Okay. Yeah. Recording. Yeah. All right. So. This is the chart of Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby suffered a major, uh, a major difficult fall from grace. Uh, you know, he was considered like a huge cultural icon and role model. And uh, during the during the last couple of years, he uh, it started out with I think this guy Hannibal Burris making fun of him on stand up comedy, and then. Uh, he was like, no, that's really a rumor and that this and then more and more people spoke out about it, it just kind of like like This one little statement that a comedian made it just snowballed and the one little snowball became like a massive avalanche um, And that's funny because to begin with he's ruled by Mars and as I say constantly Mars's only enemy is Mercury and Mercury is comedians Bill Cosby is also a comedian though. So it's quite funny um, his in his Atmakarika is Mercury, which is also you know a placement which can make one a comedian so starting off i'd never seen his chart until after these allegations came out and look at how bad this chart is you guys like fallen saturn on the ascendant it's one of the most that's that's really really bad um ruling planet mars is in the eighth house in scorpio so that's good for fighting and dealing with vulnerabilities, but that's the complete opposite of what you would expect to see for someone who like plays like a family man, like a very conservative domestic person. So having your ruling planet in eighth in the hidden house, having your Atmakarika in the fourth in a hidden house, um, having the 12th Lord right on the ascendant, there are a lot of hidden things that this person's doing that an astrologer would know right away if they were skilled. Um, so that's kind of shocking. And then you see that the 10th, Jupiter is debilitating the tenth house. Jupiter is your goodness, like how good you really are. Um, that's debilitated at its lowest point. That's not really good. Um, and you see Rahu in the ninth. So Rahu is where, like, uh, you know, Rahu tends to be where, uh, as one of my teachers put it, like where you're really false at. And K2 is where you tend to be very uptight at. And so um, he's very uptight in his K2 Gemini third house Venus stuff. Um, you know, Venus with K2 can make one very controlling about Venus and really want Venus in certain ways, certain times, like they want it, it that's all that matters. Um, and so he's very uptight there. And then Rahu in the ninth, he's very false as a, as a guide, as a role model. See the ninth house is like role models. Well, the sun's like coming out while I'm saying this. <laughs> that's probably a sign that, yeah. So there's, there's just something really strongly indicated in this chart where it's like the, the ninth house of guides and role models, you know, in Sagittarius, he had Rahu there. And so he wasn't entirely full there. And we know that because, well, if Rahu's Lord Jupiter was stronger or even had delight or some good things to it, yeah, it has some delight from other planets, but it's debilitated, you know? And, and so that kind of shows a lot of the struggles and its Lord is also debilitated. So not just Jupiter's debilitated, but its Lord Saturn is also debilitated. Um, it's also starved by Mercury, you know, and Venus. So it's just, it's just not, not what we want to see. So it seems to be like interesting that, you know, no one really who could have said anything saw this until afterwards. So it must have been meant to be, but it's pretty much undeniable that Bill, Bill Cosby did some very, you know, the amount of women that have come out against him have been like over 40, you know, it's been like 50 or more. So it's, it's, you know, it's pretty much very certain he did a lot of that. Uh, and so basically he was considered to be like drugging women and, and making them, and they were like passing out all the time. And then he was doing stuff to them. And that's just crazy because when you look at 
look at how Venus is, you know, the seventh lord, the dark heart, and it's Venus. So you really can just look at just Venus in this chart and get quite an idea of, of what's going on with his relations. And look how it's only, it's aspected by the moon and by Mars, which is, uh, on its own, it's not bad, but Mars can make one more like lustful, forceful and everything. But it's aspected by that moon, which is equally delighted in Virgo. So the moon and Venus are equally delighted. So as strong as Venus can be, moon is taking that away as well, the, at least subjectively, inwardly, his fulfillment. And then Rahu. So just Rahu and moon are like the only real aspects and Mars are hitting that Venus. So that's, that's really bad because Rahu can represent drugs and like moon can represent sleep. So like hypnotically drug induced sleep, you know, is kind of indication. And then the bed, uh, the 12th Lord of the bed has fallen too and is um, delighting that Venus. But we have to wonder how much good delight it's really given. You know how, like I said, Saturn gives three aspects. So he's also got Venus delighted by Saturn. So he's got like all these things going on. Um, but when we look into it really deeply, we can start to see the issues. Um, so then also notice that it was in Saturn Dasha when he had his fall from a height, when all this stuff came out. And it was when Saturn was transiting Sagittarius. And that's like... Like I said, the sign of falls from heights, uh, I've written at least three articles about that. Go and search those on my website, eyeoftheveda.com, um, or type Sagittarius, um, fall from a height. You should see those come up. Um, there were so many people that had falls from heights during that time period, and they usually had cruel planets and Sag to begin with, so it was like scheduled for them. Um, you know, lots of Hindu gurus um, that were corrupt for a long time finally got arrested or went to court and finally got put in jail during that time. Um, Joel Olstein, that, that one preacher had that big thing happen. Um, Doreen Virtue had a big, a big fall from a height happen. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so that was, that was also seen in his chart, you know, and kind of scheduled. Um, now, I really, what I think is really interesting is that Okay, so a lot of you guys have been, like, when I've been watching these, making these videos, y'all have been asking about the Vargas and kind of getting ahead of yourselves with the Vargas. I didn't say anything about that. So unless you've already taken classes on the Vashtas on your own, then you probably didn't know what to do with Vargas. So the way that this works is that if a planet is having an aspect to it, like is getting starved or delighted by an aspect, for example, in this chart, Venus, Saturn is aspecting Venus three away. So Venus is getting the delight of Saturn's aspect. That's happening in the sky when he was born. It's happening astronomical, astronomically. And so he has that delight in every Varga of his chart, all 16. And how strong or how weak it is, is dependent on the signs and the other things in that Varga. But that's going on in all areas of his life, okay? Um, certain areas where it will be really noticed will be the areas where Saturn and Venus are really strong to both receive and get the delight and give. Um, when it comes to though, when it comes to the planet being in just a sign, so like right here, Venus is, is delighted by Mercury, but only in that sign of Gemini. Um, it can be in another Varga or how, how do I put this? Um, basically like, like Mercury, okay, Mercury in this chart is is in Cancer, so it's sleeping. But then um, in the Navamsha, it's in Aquarius, so it's no longer sleeping in that in that Varga, and it's no longer starved by the Moon in that Varga. It's in a neutral place. Um, oh, and then like Mercury is in Gemini in his D seven, which makes sense because the D seven is your creative legacy. He left a tremendous creative legacy. So you notice Jupiter and Mercury are very very strong in this Varga. So, like, Mercury is not starved by the moon in this Varga. Mercury is just wide awake and jagrat in this Varga. And that was his Atmakarika, and yes, that makes sense because he left a big creative legacy. So that's how it works in the Vargas. You, there'll be, the, the starvation will be completely different in the different Vargas, but 
it'll only be there if it's astronomically there. Like if you have Jupiter conjunct Mercury in your birth chart, Mercury is delighted by Jupiter in every Varga. Doesn't matter whether they're with Jupiter still in other Vargas. And if you just see Jupiter and Mercury conjunct in a random Varga, that doesn't mean you have that. You don't have that delight. You have to have it astronomically. Okay, so this is pertinent because the D7 is not just your creative legacy, but like how you how you relate to others and, and it has to do with dating and, and hooking up with women in a sense, or like if you're going to be with a lot of women, the D seven will have more to do with that. The D nine is like your marriage, who you're committing to. But if you're just going to be having sex with lots of women and um, you know, doing nefarious uh, things, then that will be seen in the D seven actually much more. And so look at the D seven. He's got his Venus star by the moon and it's sleeping. And notice that his ruling planet is the sun. He's a Leo ascendant, and his sun is in the 10th, and it's with Saturn. Again, showing this kind of weird compensation issue. And when you have Saturn, sun, starving each other, which he does because it's astronomically, they're on angles in the, in the Rashi chart, that's another thing that can make one very abusive, very manipulative, and very fake um, in how they present themselves and want to compensate for their weaknesses. But in, when Saturn and Sun are conjunct, or Saturn's in Leo, can get real like sexual uh, exhibitionists, like show off type people, who, or even people who are very like forceful and use their masculine energy in very bad ways, um, sexually and stuff. And so we see that going on. And then we see that the sun, his planet, is, is still being helped by the moon though, delighted by the moon. And that's an exalted moon. And that's so, oh, that's so creepy because the moon rules the 12th house of the bed and is the planet that's starving and making the moon, the Venus go to sleep. So you see he's delighted by the moon's popularity too. So his popularity and his influence gave him more of this past than he should have been allowed to, to be able to hypnotically induce women into drug states like the Rahu moon in the Rashi chart and the Venus asleep in the D7 in the 12th house and with the 12th cusp. Um, so he was, yeah, he was, you know, putting women to sleep and they were unhappy in an unhappy way and, and yeah, doing things that were really bad. So this is terrible. Um, you know, this is really just for the purpose of you guys to learn. Uh, I was tutoring someone yesterday and I just stumbled upon this when we were looking for examples of something and I thought, well, this actually is probably really pertinent and can help you guys learn. Um, but I know it's just like a kind of a gross topic. So we will move on from that. But this is an example of how the Vargas will work and how you can get to do some really accurate, really scientific Vedic astrology when you know how to use these principles in a scientific and methodol scientific way with a method to it. And you're not just intuitively just like looking around at stuff and like hoping that it, you know, all makes sense after the fact. But when you start to study things like this, you could see this really, you could probably see this very clearly before the fact. You know, I feel pretty confident that if someone had been a, a like uh, one of these victims of Cosby and had come to me and shown me his chart and told me and been like, do you believe me? Like, blah, blah, blah. I think it would have been pretty obvious, you know? Anyways, um, let's go on to some more examples. Okay, this is a woman. Um, this is just not a famous person, just a person that I've known for a long time. And she was one of the few, you know, I, I grew up in America and I hate to say it, but like almost everyone I know is divorced. So it's actually really hard to find couples to study their charts of who are in happy relationships because it's so rare. <laughs> it's so sad um, that there are not a lot of good examples I have. But when I study Venus, I realized that it's actually very rare that Venus is truly, really strong. It is truly a gift and one of the greatest gifts you're going to get um, in life and from God to, to have a great mate and to have a great partner, you know? Um, it really is a great reward. And so it makes sense that not all of us get that and that that's a really special thing when it happens. So anyways... You notice here that Venus is delighted by Saturn, but is also starved and also delighted by Jupiter, but Jupiter's fallen. 
So that's interesting. She has a lot of ashes on her Venus. She's very happy-go-lucky, very, very sweet, good person to be around, really nice person. Um, but her Venus is completely, perfectly opposite her moon. You see 25 to 25 degrees. Wow. So that's full starvation of Venus. And the, you know, the moon is actually just past full, so it's very strong and it's cruel. And it is malefic because it's, but barely, but it's technically malefic. Let's look at the, the points. See, look at that. I just wanted to show that because if you see this, how Venus is being aspected by the moon to 60 out of 60 Virupas. So that's a full, that's a full measure of starvation. So overall, this person has had a happy life and has remained married for a long time, but then they, they finally ended up getting divorced in you know recent years and so and then they they went um and married someone else who they had kind of loved ever since high school and you know they just made the decision they had to make so there's no judgments in that regard it was just shown in their chart and when she came to me for a reading it was just like i've known her my whole life and it was so sad but i was like you're going to do this like there's no way you're not going to do this you have to do it it's in your chart it's so unavoidable so that's that's tough, you know, because a lot of people are going to be hurt or this or that. And I know a lot of these people, you know, but it just was what it was and it had to happen. And, um, everything, it, you know, that's that. So I'm not going to spend a long time on this, but she did have a major crisis in her life around like her second, um, I was going to say second Saturn turn. I don't know if that's correct, but she when you know, yeah, like around, um, in her mid 50s. I don't know. I, I can't remember when, but yeah. So she, we just kind of ex didn't expect it. No one really expected it and thought everything was fine. And then she was like, you know, I'm really not happy and I have to leave this marriage and be with someone else. And yeah. And then, so she, then she did it. So um, it's not that this person hasn't been able to be fulfilled. It's not that they've been a bad person or anything like that. It's just that showing that the moon will make one just, it will just interfere. It will just have more needs that come up. You know what I mean? That like mean that one has to, uh, you know, pay attention to those, me those needs, you know, and, and address them. And I think it, it was during a Venus period, a Venus Dasha that she, yeah, yeah. It was in Venus Dasha, either this Venus Mercury or Venus K2. I think it was Venus K2 period that she ended up making these changes. And um, that makes sense, you know, cause it's like Venus K2. Um, it's kind of like resolving and concluding. Um, and then she entered a sun sun period, which is interesting because in a traditional Vedic astrology sense, they can be, you know, in India, like they can just know that you went, you were just, if you just entered sun dasha and you were in Venus dasha in the past, an, an actually very accurate prediction almost every time is, so you just left your relationship or you just left a marriage or you just left something because the sun is about like kind of getting rid of those things and focusing on yourself and on your path or your new creative destiny. So when you just leave Venus Dasha and go into Sun Dasha, it's very common to break off of a, a relationship if you were in one in the Venus period. Doesn't happen every time, but that's very common. All right. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, oh yeah, this is Bill Cosby. Start again. So. Now we will look at, all right, this is just another random person who I know, and he has an exalted Venus. So you would think that he should always be happy all the time, you know, but it's, it's not exactly the case because it's with K2. So again, um, there's sort of these limits on it. It feels hidden and obscured from their life. And it's starred by the moon, which is a fairly strong and bright moon, and its lore is exalted. Um, and so this person is just, uh, he's like a yoga teacher. He kind of like presents an image that he's very like happy and blissful and, you know, just like thriving. But um, when we do sessions, it's, it's, it's very clear that he's more emotionally challenged and just still not being able to make through, make break through a lot of emotional things. It's kind of repressing things and deceiving himself. And that's because of the, you know, Kapata yoga or whatever the, um, in the fourth house of the emotions, having Saturn Rahu in the fourth, um, that just means that, yeah, like there's just a lot of emotional work that has to be done, you know? Um, 
And so as he grows and has done that and kind of like bounced back and forth, he's been more fulfilled. But um, he ten he stayed in a relationship that's been, you know, for like five years now that he got advice on a long time ago. And I was like, I think you should leave it. And then he just kept thinking like, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it'll change if I do this, if I do that. And it's just been the exact same. And every time I talk to him, he's like, yeah, it's okay. You know, he never says it's like changed or healed or it's thriving or he might, might, he'll just kind of be like, yeah, it's good, you know, and it's okay. Um, and he could really be with so many other people if he wanted to, um, cause he is a good guy and everything, but he's just kind of not really paying attention to the emotions and, you know, and he's been the type of person that's kind of been like, am I depressed? You know, like not really realize it at times. And, and I, you know, I think that's really good that he was realizing it, but in general, we can just say that the emotional, the emotions just kind of cloud his, his ability to see his relationships clearly. And I think if he was to check out of his body and just see it from another person like me or something, he would, he would definitely make a lot of big decisions or, you know, he would make changes or something. So, um, that's another example of that. Um, so this is another famous person, uh, Edward Norton. This is a really famous actor. He's like one of the most amazing actors in the sense of technical skill and ability. And you can see that because he's got the plan of acting Mercury uh, really strong with K2 um, in Mula Tricona. And, but his, his, uh, his Amakarka is the moon. And his Venus is in Cancer in the eighth house, star. Basically, the reason you don't see an Edward Norton in a lot of movies is because he's basically got a really big reputation for being very, like, difficult person, a very just, like, um, pushy, bossy person. He's just very kind of controlling. And that can be the case when you have uh, this type of chart, you know, and you're Scorpio and your Venus is star. So you don't really want to, like, relate to people in the way that they need to be related to, you want to relate to them the way that you think they should relate to because it's your moon, your ego mind that is dispositing and controlling that Venus. Um, so I've talked about his chart before, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but yeah, he has a star Venus and he is very, he does not have the diplomacy skills that he needs maybe to get further in life. Um, and, um, yeah, so it's kind of too bad because I would have liked to have seen him more in more movies. Um, I think the last movie he did was that movie Birdman, and that was really funny. But in that movie, he plays, he's basically cast in that movie to play himself, to play like an overly perfectionist at method actor who's like kind of, kind of a little too arrogant about how good they are. You know, the K2 Mercury and Virgo. And, um, you know, Mercury has problems of self-aggrandizement when it gets too strong or, or too, too strong, yeah. Um, and so it's kind of funny because I even remember reading something that while he was filming that movie, he wanted to talk to the, the script, the writer and the director, and he had an issue with the script. He was like, we should fix this. My character wouldn't say that. And the director paused and was like, you're – you're playing the character that is supposed to say that. So you're actually still like, this is all part of your, your whole character and your whole story. It was very meta. Anyways, he's, he's got, he lacks a lot of diplomacy, even though he's incredibly skilled, incredibly articulate. Um, that Venus is very starved. And so, uh, yeah. So he also has a Danya yoga, a misery yoga of the 12th Lord in the ninth, Oh, wait, no, that's a, that's a good one. The ninth Lord is in the 12th, 12th Lord and the ninth. So that actually has probably helped him succeed. Um, <clears throat> that would be a Maha Yoga. Um, that probably helped him spend a lot more time on developing his acting skills. Anyways, um, all right, now we're going to look at just another. This is just another person, a um, friend of mine. He has the ninth lord and the twelfth and the twelfth lord and the ninth as well and so he has uh sort of a similar idea where he he puts a lot of um he puts a lot of attention to relationships but then is always kind of like resolving them or letting go of them or making peace with certain issues in them um and then sort of going back and forth with that um he has venus starved by cancer by the moon sorry um he has Venus uh, starved by the moon, 
N. So he also is someone who has had difficulty with diplomacy. Um, he has had difficulty in like being able to feel like when he's in a relationship that the relationship is like still supporting his spiritual path and his own self. He feels like he really loses himself really easily in relationships. Um, and he kind of does. And I, yeah, and I could, I would agree that that's true. Um, and you know, Rahu's in the seventh as well. So it's like, he's really confused about partnerships. He needs to go in there, but the Lord of that Rahu sleeping is Venus and sleeping by, um, in the sign of the moon. So at times his emotions just really color things and throw him off and mislead him um, when it comes to relationships. Um, and it can be hard for him. He needs to get second opinions and second advice. And really whenever Rahu's out in your chart is where you really should get, like go ask a reader, go ask people for opinions. Um, because it basically means that, you know, that's where you get eclipsed. So you don't know it that well. You don't know that area of your life very well if Rahu's there. All right, and now we come to Jupiter, uh, sorry, <laughs> Nikola Tesla. We come to, um, he is, he's a famous, you know, inventor and really a, a, you know, a brilliant person as we can see with Jupiter on the Ascendant and, <clears throat> you know, just Mercury, the Atmakarika wide awake in its own sign. You see the Swampsha as Mercury with Jupiter, really, really brilliant person. <coughs> Maybe even almost angelic. Honestly, you know, we got to wonder with a soul like Tesla, like, where did he come from? Um, and you see that Venus is starved. Um, it is in the fourth house. It is starved. And it's in between Sun and Saturn. Fascinating because Tesla was uh, remained a virgin his whole life. So that's a pretty starved Venus, right? <laughs> you know, he uh, remained a virgin his whole life. And honestly, I think that that's very rare for someone to do that without having like major health issues and psychological issues resulting, you have to be a very highly evolved person to be able to do that. So I think that's shown with his Swampsha. Um, but, and I think it's also cause K2 was in the seventh. So he's already exhausted a lot of Venus sexual Libra karmas. Um, he also has some interesting other avashas in his chart though. And he was a very peculiar person. He was really grossed out by anything round and especially pearls and especially overweight women. And these are all the lunar things. These are all the moon basically. And so um, he was starved by the moon. And that is to say that his Atmakarika Mercury was also starved by the moon and his Venus was starved by the moon. And that is to say that like, he, I guess if I think about it, he was probably so left brain and so like math and logical and numerical that any like lunar stuff just kind of annoyed him. And that just shows how much of a mercurial paradigm he had um, inwardly. And if you watch documentaries and things about him, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't really, you know, I haven't, I don't really want to go into Tesla too much because he was a really weird person, but like he would, um, he was disgusted. If you wore pearls, he would send you home from his office or, you know, if a, yeah, if a woman ever wore pearls, he was so disgusted. Like if they worked for him, he would send them home for the day. Um, he was really grossed out by, by certain things like that. And that's really, really, really interesting since his Venus was starred by the moon, you know, and that real rules out, uh, you know, pearls and round things. And you also see that K2 and Mars, Mars is shaming the moon. So Mars was shaming the moon. It's just like, uh, wow, that's funny. That's perfect. So he made women feel ashamed of their femininity or their roundness somehow, or something about that really bothered him. But I'm not going to let it, you know, I'm not going to worry about too much. I'll let that slide because he's truly was a really angelic, amazing being. And we wouldn't have this ability to talk to each other, to communicate to you guys more for him. Um, you know, he's the one who created all the technology we have, radar, wireless, everything. And he gets, he's just now finally getting the credit for it just like most people who are, you know, really more advanced in their time. So um, whatever idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies he had, uh, I'm really glad that he incarnated on the planet. Um, all right, so this will, uh, that's all the examples I have for today of Venus and Moon. We'll go on to some other ones next. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thanks.